to Suladan Plays Superliminal. Ah, uh, weird thing happened. When I opened the game, Superliminal opened a, uh, web, a Firefox window asking to use Superliminal with my Epic Games account, and I'm confused by this. Ah. Uh, I'm very confused by it. Why is it now, of all times, it decides to do this? Like, share, Epic Games will share your display name, language preferences, and linked account display name. What, what is that even? What? Why? Why does Superliminal want... Oh, because there was an update to Superliminal. That's probably why. Yeah, annoying when I get ready to record a game and I have to wait for 30 minutes for it to update. At least it wasn't a four-hour update like Subnautica Below Zero did. Authorization code is not valid. Oh, well. Uh, I'm just going to close that and resume gameplay. We're going to pretend that nothing weird's going on. And the loading screen has gone weird. Why am I not surprised? I love the sheer number of weird loading screens that this game has to offer. It's also going nowhere now! Poke a hole in it. Let it leak out like a giant swimming pool or something. Okay, yeah, we're down here now. Hey, can I go back? I think if I go around here, yeah. There was this whole endless loop puzzle hallway. This door was out here behind it. And then uh, Doc said something about the, this being a place of pure perspective. You're well beyond dreaming now, and further out than anyone has ever come back from. But we hope that you won't get discouraged. After all, if this is a place of pure perspective, isn't it also a place where a different point of view could make anything possible? Yes. Isn't that why you came here? Oh. Ah, uh, but yeah, let's go. Oh dear, it's ski free. <laughs> That's a giant water cooler. Oh dear. I didn't know I was playing ski free today. See something out there? But I'm gonna go this way. Wait, can I? Sh should I go in there? I probably should, rather than exploring the endless void. But I'm gonna go into the endless void! Which, it doesn't creep me out right now because it, you know, looks like a snowy place. It's not an unloaded void, it's just the endless outside the game void. Why is there a... What is that even? What is... What What do you mean show online to Epic Social? What? Okay. Epic? Don't start being weird to me. I don't think that picked up in the recording, but there was a weird thing on that popped up on my screen. There was a loading bar across the top, and it said something about your epic social panel, and I don't want a social panel. I'm trying to explore the snowy perspective field wasteland of my mind. I found a crack in the snow. Am I even supposed to be out here? I don't think so. I think the game assumes that I went through the door. Well, the game assumed wrong, and I'm gonna walk all the way around this big snowy... snow thing. Can I go through that door? This is the door that was in the background. It is not very securely held up. It's also not a door. It's a panel of wall. It's a broken wall panel. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Still bothered and paranoid by the weird epic pop-up thing. Pop-up from Epic Games, not that the pop-up itself was epic. Or it was not. These giant wall panelings, on the other hand, are far more epic. Not to be confused with an epoch, which would be like a long time period. Oh, my dear dude! Oh, sorry, that spooked me. Did you really just let me walk all the way around here and then not let me finish walking around? No, game, don't. No. Let me over. Let me out. No. Don't make me go all the way around again. Aha! <laughs> you were not prepared for my ability to jump. I don't think it was because it made some weird sounds. That sound played really fast, like... But that's too bad. 
Like, can I climb up here from over here? But he did say a new perspective. So a new perspective I shall give it by climbing up the mountain! Where it never expected me to go. Can I crawl under there? No, I cannot because this game lacks a crouch. Maybe. I can. Also, that is a bishop made out of snow. Snow bishop. Also, yeah, apparently there's not much to do out here. So we're just going to go through the door. Because apparently that's what it wants to do. Uh, oh, oh, my dear. The, the axe is shifting slightly. This is strange. Also, I can see through it there a little bit. Okay. Giant chessboard. Man, I love the, the the inverted alternating colors we've got going on here. That's fascinating to me. That's just cool. That's a really cool effect. I win! No, don't fall over! And I died. I fall through any of them. So here's the question. Do I use these to make the platform solid? I do. So you're saying I... <gasps> I realized what I had done, but it was too late. I'm having to play like a king piece in chess and move one at a time and not get ahead of myself and grab the one I'm standing with. Which is exactly what I keep trying to do. Exactly what I need to not do. See, I keep trying to do it. It's just reflexive at this point. And I feel like I'm gonna... <coughs> Sneeze. Oh look, a door that I can't take items through. Can I go around the door? No, I cannot. Save point. That is not a door. Oh, that's not gonna work. I can go through here. I'm confused by the fact that I can go through here now, but yeah, I see what I need to do. This door is just weird. Oh, are you saying I can only go... Th oh, I can only go through it when I put it out there because that changes my perspective. That's what he was talking about. He was hinting to the fact that I have to keep changing the perspective of this place. By, uh, I change what is solid and what is not by placing objects in those bounds. Oh my dear. Oh my dear, I really, really, really want to do what I'm tempted to do right now. <gasps> oh, I love it. Oh, this is fascinating and beautiful. Gorgeous. I wanna. I see. Oh, that's just beautiful to look at the depth and the alternation and the movement and the parallax and. <gasps> I wanna live here. This is the kaleidoscope of dreams. I love this. Oh, I love. This is beautiful. Oh, I wanna just mess around with this for days. Oh, look at the. Oh, the patterns. I don't have words for what I am viewing right now. 
Oh my dear goodness. Oh, look at that. The infinite number of patterns I can produce here just by moving my mouse and changing what I see. Oh, the whole game could be that. That's gorgeous. I'm probably giving somebody an epileptic fit right now, but this is gorgeous. I'm sorry. I mean, no offense. Like, I just, I, oh, but, but I, I don't have words. This is beyond, oh, I could just live here. Oh, my dear. I want an art program like this. With just subtle changes tesseracting off into oblivion and oi. Oh, look at the subtle movements. Oi. Oh, my dear. Oh. Oh, it's gorgeous. The full range of beauty is not being picked up in the recording because of the frame rate difference, but oh my dear, I want to live here. I want to just stay here and stare. This is a lotus eater trap. I don't want to leave. It's beautiful. I know where the door is, but I don't want to leave. It's too beautiful. It's too beautiful. Oh my, I've got to stop fawning over this, but my dear goodness. I could stare at this for hours. I could just, it's so pretty. It's mirroring upon mirroring in kaleidoscopic fantasy. And I had to leave. I'm behind the alarm clock. I'm taking the box with me. 7.20 a.m. Okay. 7.59 a.m. Oh no, I'm falling deeper. I needed to activate it! Ah, jump past it. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. We're safe. I wonder how many Five Nights at Freddy's players are staring at that 8 a.m. saying to themselves, no, it should be 6 a.m. Oh, I love this game. Love this game. The way it messes with perspective and ideas and expectations and fascination. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh dear. I've fallen deeper. I've gone deeper. What? Did... I went through here before. That was. Hello. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and by now, you may have realized that all of this has happened exactly the way it was supposed to. Whoa! You see, everyone who comes to the Institute does so because they feel that they are no longer in control of something important to them. Am I climbing my way back up? But, more often than not, the problem is not that the problems we face can't be solved. The problem is that we become so afraid of failure that we refuse to see our problems from a new perspective. And so we do the same things again and again and again. And therein, of course, we find exactly the failure we were looking for. for words at the moment. Your life will always be a struggle and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box and you overcame them. 
Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. In a few minutes, you'll be back in the real world. And some part of you will say that none of this was real. So how could it have really meant anything? It's not how meaning but is just like the power of perspective itself, it will have been as real as you believed it to be. All you've got to do is wake up. The value in something is not defined by whether it is real or not. That was beautiful. <laughs> I am so at a loss for words. That is just purely beautiful. I love this game. Very excellent voice acting too. Like whoever did Dr. Glenn Pierce, like hats off to you. You did that, that's just excellent. You have a way of just sounding so calm and soothing. I love the accent just it, it's all done so beautifully i really i <laughs> this game so far exceeded my expectations i mean i didn't know much about it to start with i, I just knew the name of it and i'd seen the title screen but uh th this game just so far exceeded my expectations as a game that i i love it i love this game this is going on my list of favorites because i'm really bad at picking favorites i just have a list because i just can't and I'm not good at categorizing and like making favorites, so. Like I said, I'm looping back on myself. I love this game. This is fascinating, gorgeous, beautiful, and can I click anything? I wanna subvert my expectations of the credit sequence by breaking the credit sequence. Why won't you let me break the credits? Scout. I am going to assume that that's the scout from TF2. Only scout there is clearly. Fly, flash players apparently. Uh, PR on video. I don't know what to say at this point. This game is outstanding. It's fabulous. It keeps just when you're getting used to one mechanic, it throws something new in and changes the angle you're looking at it from. And I love it. Also, I didn't realize things were going the way they were supposed to. I thought I was just falling deeper into the void. I figured I would eventually bounce back. This is this is beyond outstanding this, this is just I love it oh I'm still riding the glow of that just beautiful hallway and leading from there into that long beautiful monologue and oh this is fascinating I love this game thanks for dreaming Wake up, beat the game. Extra modes. I really want to do this. Uh, Somnusculpt Beta. Did I do any of this? No, I didn't. What game am I thinking? Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable had stuff like that. That's what I'm thinking of. Because it had the whole beta, the, the, the beta laboratory. Instructions, click the water cooler to import out. Oh my. Oof. I can import obj files. Well, this is a bit above me, but cool. I am so confused and fascinated.
Oh no, I signed something again. I just want to click. Ooh. I'm gonna make it bigger. Oh, bigger. Oh, <gasps> am fly, am fly. Oh my dear! Oh, I didn't expect them to be in the air. I thought they were clipped through each other. Oh my dear goodness. I don't... I don't even... Woo. Wait. That's not what I want to do. I want to stretch it that way. What is why? You know what, I'm getting out of here before I break the world, so main menu. I've already broken the world, but I mean, I don't want to break it anywhere. Hello, and welcome to the Superliminal Developer Commentary. I'm Albert, Game Director of Superliminal. Myself and the rest of the team will be popping up every now and then as you play. With subtitles open, you can see who is talking and what their role on the game is. Patent pending somnoscope technology provides safe and effective dream therapy. You're saying I can replay through the game with developer commentary? Didn't DVDs have that feature? Right next to the secondary overflow parking lot at the University Medical Center. Somnoscope will make your dreams come true. Play the game again. But I'm going to do that on my own time. Because at some point, you've got to play the game yourself if you want to see some of this stuff. I can't, uh, can't show you everything. Hi, my name's Chris. I was the producer and designer on Superliminal. You're going to get a taste Hi, of it here. This okay. is Will O'Neill, and I was the writer on Superliminal. Okay, so that very beginning of Superliminal is actually one of the last parts we finished. Throughout development, we created so many different introductions to the game. Not all of them were cutscenes, like that one, but we ended up feeling that that in-game video sequence offered a really smooth on-ramp that let us set the framework for what's to come. By keeping it grounded in the world, rather than just a video, we felt it to be a good way to get you situated in the game and aware of what's up. So when I wrote the opening line of, are you filled with feelings of self-doubt at the beginning of the game, I was definitely envisioning a player immediately unconsciously responding with yes. And of course, the purpose of that is to sort of pull you into the idea that you're not playing a character in the game. That it's, it's you inside this experience. And of course, making it clear that the clinic itself is not necessarily the safest or most prestigious place to get treated creates an immediate tension. Uh, especially when the very first thing you do in the game is accidentally sign away all of your rights. Now, my complaint there is I don't get to actually read what's on the page, so all I do is I clicked it to try to read it and a signature happens. Uh, but I don't know what I signed, so I didn't really get that as a player. Uh, I would have had either a way to zoom in on it or see it closer or something. Maybe you pick it up and examine it, and when you put it down, you sign it. But I don't know. That is just my thoughts on it. And again, I'm not going super far into this. I'm just kind of showcasing this first room. See, I can't see what it says. It's just terms of service. I want to read it. I want to see what that page says. Like, you sign it, and it's just like, oh, well, I signed a contract. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't know what I signed. Oh, hi. A lot of people ask about how the resizing mechanic works. The concepts are actually quite easy. To keep an object looking the same, assume if we move the object twice as far away, it just needs to be twice as big. It's all proportional. Interestingly enough, this also works no matter what field of view you use. The hard part of this mechanic isn't the actual resizing. It's trying to figure out where the object needs to be. To do this, you need to test a weirdly shaped object with a weirdly shaped background and try to find the right ratio for the object to be big enough to not touch anything while keeping everything accurate and optimized. A 
A lot of people ask about. No. A lot of no. people ask. A lot of people ah. ask about how the resizing mechanic works. Terms of service. Hey, this is Matt. I did the music and sound. Welcome to Somnasculpt. This very first jazz piece in the game is called I Wonder. And if it sounds at all familiar to you, that's because you just heard its melody and chord progression in the Somnasculpt TV jingle back at the start of the game, which I called Smooth Wonder. Hi, I'm Logan, and I'm level designer on Superliminal. A difference with the main resizing mechanic in this game is how much freedom it gives the player. This puzzle is a good example. In most puzzle games, if you put an object on a button in this scenario, the object doesn't need to be moved anymore. The key to unlock the door removes the key from the problem space. But unfortunately, in our game, you can just turn around and grab the object from any distance away. Therefore, we've gotten good at adding barriers in many places so people won't carry an object through all puzzles forever. Oink. Confirmed. You can move Surprise, freely, wasn't any interact commentary with surrounding on objects, and listen to messages from your patient care team. Yeah. Please note that I am the Hi, standard... Hi, my name is Alex, and I performed gameplay programming on Superliminal. ...chosen to remind you that I am not a... When I joined the project, there weren't really any menus except the absolute bare minimum to get the player into the game. And there wasn't any keyboard support either. Don't you start with keyboard support? So the first order of business was to add proper mouse and keyboard support to the title and pause menus. The hardest part was supporting switching between the two on the fly, because you never know when the player is going to do it, and it could lock them out of the game. I want a pause menu that locks people out of the With game. With that foundation laid, I started working on controller support. In terms of the menus, there wasn't much work to do. The pad basically acts like a keyboard. But gameplay was quite a different story. As we approached launch, we all agreed that controller support wasn't quite up to par, and so we shipped without it, adding it around a month after launch. Makes sense. Sometimes you gotta do that. To make controllers feel as good as mouse and keyboard, I wrote a bunch of code to modify how controller input is interpreted. For mouse and keyboard, input is more or less one-to-one -one map to player movement. So you move the mouse and the camera turns. But that doesn't feel good with controllers. Trying to pick up a very small object, say a chess piece, could be quite finicky. Yeah, that's one reason I prefer In the end, I made it so looking around person. accelerates the longer the stick is pressed, and behaves differently based on whether you are looking vertically or horizontally, and also while you are holding an object. Probably the biggest change was a quote-unquote auto-lock feature, Excellent. which draws the focus to a grabbable object as your cursor gets closer to it. That's All these changes thing. culminated in controllers feeling much more accurate and satisfying. Probably similar to the fact that when we had objects on the wall, they had to line up just right. If you get close enough, it kind of helps give you that final nudge. It's just really, really nice for control input. Throughout each level, we try to give subtle hints on which objects are grabbable and which aren't. This is more of an introductory level, so it doesn't have a lot of objects. But you might notice that grabbable objects, in yellow, are complementary colors to the background colors of green and beige. My question is, why can I only rotate along the like horizontal axis? Why can't I flip the cheese over if I want? I can do so with physics if I just want to get finicky. But it, it's just a peculiarity to me. During eyelids, you will lose the ability to awaken suddenly... There's quite a bit of foreshadowing throughout this level. We wanted to hint at the mechanics that are going to come later in the game. For example, the projection, the clone, and the portal hallways later on. Little things like that feel like visual treats when you're playing this level, but serve as fun reminders when you play for a second time that we kind of told you the whole thing all along. Projection. I don't know what he means by clone and hallways, because you had the one where every time you clicked it, you just cloned it, but projection? Hi there, I'm Steve. I'm the art director of Superliminal. One of our main visual touchstones for this section centers around a couple of silly questions. 
What would someone in the early 90s dream up as a futuristic testing facility? And how could they build that on a shoestring budget but with infinite time? I feel like those two questions were ones we actually asked ourselves more than once during the process of making this game. See, I don't know. Just for the sake of this, I'm going to see if there's anything out here. But I'm curious, if you don't go out there, does anything different happen in the game? Probably not, aside from you not getting the message saying, Hey, you've gone out of bounds. I'm going to go out of bounds. Warning. You have deviated from the orientation pathway. At the Pierce Institute, patient safety is a Random keynote in our soda. corporate priority tetrahedron. A variable degree of force can and will be authorized to ensure patient safety. Please return to the orientation pathway. Oh, well. When we were playtesting, we realized that players were getting tripped up on different aspects of the resize mechanic. So we try to make each puzzle in this level teach a specific action. The cheese puzzle is our way of forcing players to make something from very small to very big. And the puzzle after that is the opposite. This broken window puzzle is to teach you how to make things small and fit through a hole, but at a distance. So you can't simply walk up to it. Ah. All environments perceived during eyelids should reflect how a typical... Long? Okay. Uh, I don't know how long the first level is, but I think that's a pretty good showcase of what the developer commentary version of the game is. I'm going to go ahead and pause here. This is an excellent game. I highly recommend it. There's a link in the description as for always. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next game. Did I say I love this game? Because I really do. Bye.